Welcome to another edition of the Takes Me Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest EJ Christian, alongside, of course, Mike the Squid Bernier. Mikey, what's up? I feel like I'm as annoyed as William Regal looking at a really bad cup of tea right now. What are you watching? Uh, this is the debut of Kenta from NXT TakeOver Fatal 4. Just as me and Joe were talking about before the show went live, how there have been very few fails by NXT, he being one of them. Tenta? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kenta. He went by Hideo Itami okay. in WWE. Uh, uh, he is wrestling. He is wrestling for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship in like uh, three weeks. Oh, okay, okay. And of course, the the uh, Mike. Oh, not Mike. I said Mike. Duh. Wow, I am Mike. <laughs> the, the real oh. Joe Lopez, who's maybe on Twitter, whatever her account. I don't know. Joe, <laughs> what's up, buddy? I, I am on there, but my name is Mike. So the high pitch extraordinaire. Yeah, find him. The high pitch yep. voice extraordinaire. <laughs> the there show. You go. <laughs> uh, of course, follow us on Twitter. I, think, I believe it's Takes Three Wrestling uh, at Takes Three Wrestling. Um, yep. By the way, guys, I, I think what I may do on Roy Rumble is I may live tweet during the entire show next week. Just cause I like well, it. Just Me and same. Joe will be sitting on the couch, so well, I'll be on the couch. I'll be I'll be on the couch doing the same shit. So, but no, cool. no big deal. Excellent. So. One week, one, week, one, week away, one week away from the second best pay per view, um, so my second favorite pay per view of all time, the Rumble, and arguably my favorite. Um, I mean, mainly, mainly. I don't know if I'd say. Hold on, you saying in the WWE? Or you saying of all wrestling? I mean, what am I going against? SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Mania, uh, Armageddon, Starcade, Halloween Havoc, Armageddon, Halloween Havoc, uh, <laughs> Bash of the Beast, Starcade. Starcade. Beach Blast. <laughs> New, New, New Japan Blast. Blast. Kingdom. <laughs> no, Rumble's up there. <laughs> Rumble's up there. It's just pretty up there. Great top Balls top. of Fire. Like, come on. In the words of Bruce Prichard, top five. <laughs> All right, let's Wait, we, are, what, oh, go ahead. Are, are you even aware of the fact that there was a WWE pay per view like two years ago called Great Balls of Fire? No, I was not aware of that. But thank that, you. That, that was a thing. There's also a WCW pay per view called Sin. Sin? Yes, there was. That was their last like three months of yeah. existence. Wait, was it the, the was that the the one that they were going to do, but they never did because ultimately they they shut down. No, that was like Big Bang. Or yes, something like that. that was, it was Big Bang, right? That Big Bang was it was yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, Sin was like the January pay per view of the year that they went out of business. And I yeah, think it might have been the show where like Sid like. Yeah, and like the net, they've actually like edited it off of the network. Is that nasty? By the way, I, I may want to debate this, but I think I, I, I've said this before in the past, though. I, I WWE has an overkill of pay per views. They need to draw back. The, the business has changed now. They they can just you know the pay per views almost devalue the TV shows. So <laughs> I'm just saying. I think AEW's the way AEW structured their schedule is perfect. You know, strongly disagree. Well, 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 one day we'll debate that. One day we'll debate that. Anyway, let's get to the news of the week, and we'll start here on a very sad, on a sad uh, start of the news section here. Um, WWE Hall of Famer, father of The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, Rocky Johnson, passed away this week uh, at the age of seventy-five. Uh, very sad news. Very shocking news. There was he was he was actually even sick. Uh, I found out t- tonight as I was coming on, they actually f- we finally found out how he passed away. He had, to, he had a blood clot, which led to a heart attack. Um, oh. So it wasn't even like he was sick. He just, it's just all of a sudden. So the good news is that he didn't actually suffer from what we're told. It, just, it happened so fast. That he, was, he was here and gone. So, um, but for, for many people don't know who Rocky Johnson is, obviously, besides the fact that he was The Rock's dad. Um, he was, he was among... Among winning many NWA titles in the past, he was also the first black Georgia heavyweight champion. He was he also won the World Tag Team Championship along with Hall of Famer Tony Atlas um, in 1983 become, to become the first black uh, African-American uh, champion in WWE history. Um, so he's had a very decorated uh, career himself. Um, of course, second tra- he's a second generation uh, star. Um Guys, your thoughts on Rocky Johnson's passing? And because this came as a shock, and there was no lead up. This is this boom. He just passed away. Yeah, uh, I was actually in route to uh, the AEW show, and I was in the car, and it popped up on my Twitter, and I was just like, at first, like, because it was like really weird. Like the first like couple people to report it weren't like 
the most credible sources. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just kind of like, all right, well, maybe someone's just like spoofing it. And then uh, it got reported by the Cauliflower uh, Cauliflower Alley, Alley Club that he was he has unfortunately passed away. And I was like, okay, that's a little bit more of a credible source. They're not going to put out anything without doing their due diligence um, on their end. Um, unfortunate news. Uh, a guy who helped uh, revitalize uh, the industry, helped uh, expand the industry, um, broke down a lot of barriers to give us the the ability to see guys like, and I'm going to just re- reel off some random names here. And, mm-hmm. You know, you guys can do whatever you want to. Uh, without him, there's not guys like Farouk. Correct. Um, who, who is a great uh, African American world champion, won the WCW world title. Uh, even even random guys like Ahmed Johnson, uh, maybe even to an extent the Street Profits, guys like that. Without you know a, a guy to help expand the tag team division, um, those guys could not be in WWE or may not, may not be wrestling at all. Um, so it's one of those where um, you see how he he himself changed the the world of professional wrestling and then you add on to the fact that his son is arguably in the top five of the greatest sports entertainers of all time um so you know whenever you think about his bloodline uh has led to the rock and you know his bloodline also is involved in numerous other professional wrestlers so um at the end of the day um it is unfortunate um give our thoughts and prayers to Rocky and his mother and you know his family in this time it was not uh, something that was very expected um, both AEW and NXT both did moments of silence yeah. and everything before their shows so um, it was uh, it's sad um, like it, it's really weird it's not one of those that you like, you like the ones you don't see coming are the worst and that was one that you just didn't really see coming um, you know we've had the, the, the past where we've gotten the Oh, someone's sick. They're going to the hospital. It's not looking good. And then, unfortunately, they go. Um, but you kind of understand that the it, it may be coming to an end. And with Rocky, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't know that that was happening. Right. Joe. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just R.I.P. and obviously thoughts to his family. And you know, um, I I don't know that I've ever even seen a Rocky Johnson match. If I'm being perfectly honest. Um, cause he kind of predates when I was a really big fan of, you know, WWF. Um, he might even predate when I was alive, quite frankly. So I'm not, I'm not sure, but you know, there's no denying that he has a place in history as more than just the rock's dad. So it's, it's kind of cool to kind of cool to see him getting, getting love <laughs> and respect. And, you know, it's, it's always sad when someone passes away and hopefully, Hopefully he'll be remembered. It'd be cool to see if like the WWE Network maybe puts up like a collection of some of his matches or sure something. I would totally check that out if they haven't already. I'm sure they will. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would check that out. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Uh, worth noting, he made the Hall of Fame um, in 2008, retired in 1991. He was still technically part of the company during the whole many years, but he wasn't as active. Oh, uh, okay. So, like, he was. You know, eighty three. Obviously, that's the year before Hulkamania, Hulkamania really started. Um, he was he was still kind of involved here and there. Him and Atlas both, um, but they pretty much were getting you know toward the end of the eighties, mid middle of the eighties, end of the eighties. They were pretty much getting you know less less TV time. So, right, um, right. So, no good way to segue out of this, unfortunately. But we have to, we have to continue the news here. Um, Taz. As officially elite, he signed a multi-year deal with AEW this week. Um, Taz was on TV. Can you, say, can you say his name one more time? You sounded like me. Taz. There you go. <laughs> Taz. <laughs> um, guys, your thoughts on Taz? Cause, cause I, cause I'll tell you what. I'm kind of excited about this because I, I saw her on TV a couple weeks ago. Um, on the first, I, I, I believe it was the first episode of, of Dynamite in 2020. I thought he did a phenomenal job. Now, obviously, what will he be doing? Be beyond beyond commentary. I don't know, but he's gonna be involved <laughs> with AW. Uh, Joe, your thoughts? I think it's awesome. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big Taz fan. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I think he's great on commentary. I think he's, you know, he, he was on commentary in WWE for a long time. He did commentary in Impact. I think he's really good. And you know, I mean, other than wanting the now AEW to go dig up and sign Rene Dupree so that we can hear Taz talk about him being a French guy, 
Other than it's that, me, I'm a French guy. There you it's go. Me, I'm a French guy. Burn, your thoughts on Taz? Making, making it, becoming an elite officially? Beat him if you can. Survive if he lets you. I love that catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, I'm always a big Taz fan, so uh, yeah. I think it's going to be cool. He was actually at the show doing commentary. On what, like Dark? For dark yeah, he did, yeah, he, he did dark. dark. So yeah, he was there. It was cool. cool. Speaking he, of... Him, uh, and his, oh, him and his orange Hawaiian shirt was really awesome. Oh, uh, Lord. Did you, did you see Justin Roberts' outfit? <laughs> yes. I looked over to... My brother-in-law, and I was like, I think he's trying to find where he can get a kilo of cocaine. Oh, my God. I like Justin Roberts, though, but he can be, he can be a little bit over the top at times. Like, his whole, John Moxley! <laughs> that, that's a little uh, over the top. Let's look at AEW here real quick, because cause this show, there'll be, there'll be no AEW topics this week, I, I imagine, um, based on our pre-show uh, discussions. Uh, AEW the news also still um, them and Turt Warner uh, Warner Media uh, signed extension through 2023, which includes a second show on somewhere on the Turner platform. Fellas, how should they utilize the second show moving forward if they whatever they do? Get over more talent. Yeah. I mean, it really, I think it just depends on when the show is and yeah. how long it is. Well, that's, but, what, that's what I'm saying. What, what, what do you think? If you're, okay, you're Tony Khan, you're Tony Khan, okay? You're okay. approved to do, to do a second show right now. What day will you put it? What time slot? How will you structure it? All that. I mean, look, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm getting to argue as, as the owner of the company, if I'm getting to argue for, like, when that can be, because I'm sure, I'm sure he's not necessarily going to have, like, uh, his entire Three choice rings. like yeah it'll probably be more based on what the schedule allows and the network will decide that but i mean y- you gotta you gotta at least make the argument that like 605 eastern on saturday nights on Beautiful. Would be pretty you awesome. get me you get me you get me joe because that's, <laughs> like, that's exactly what i'm gonna go with go old school wcw saturday night yeah no that would be cool that would be cool even if it's only an hour or two i mean the thing is like i said the key is and and truth be told, they do this with Dark, and I actually really enjoy watching Dark, and I still will continue watching Dark. Um, it would be cool to see more talent get more TV time. That that would be awesome. Mikey. Uh, so does this mean that they're not going to have Dark anymore? Or not necessarily. No, I think not not necessarily. Have, it could be this great. one. It could be either. It could be Dark being that slot, or it could be an, 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 yet another show. No, that's from what saying. I understand, it's another show. Dark is not changing, apparently. And that's good. Then, I, have, I have thoughts on that. Then I would probably say your safest bet would probably be in that Saturday time slot. Or maybe like a... Eh, that's too close. I was going to say like Thursday. I mean, the problem is, is like they're in a really weird spot where they're like in the middle of the week already as it is. Yeah. Let me, so let me... it really takes away Tuesday and went, Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. Um, so it's like you could do Monday or Friday, but you're going up against Raw and SmackDown, which I don't know if that's really what you want to do with your right. second job. Right, absolutely. No. Um, so, I mean, Saturday really makes the most sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can probably do any time Saturday, mm-hmm. but the real issue that you have to remember is, uh, you know, during football season, there are Saturday games, college football's ramped up. So, you know, um, that's probably something that they may be concerned about. So this may be something that goes into like a late time slot. Well, I have an idea. Um, first off, Monday and Friday off the table probably because of the Raw SmackDown. Tuesday and Thursday off the table because of basketball because Turner, that's the number one priority. Okay, Wednesday's already, they already have that. So, therefore, Saturday has to be the day. But here's the thing with Saturday, and granted, this could be, only, this could be used uh, also in addition four times a year. I Look, you can put it in the morning like the old school days in WWF used to do when the, you had the, the you know, superstars on, on Saturday mornings or challenge on Sundays. Um what I would do is what Joe just said. 605, T, uh, TBS, TNT, doesn't matter what platform you use, okay? You, no matter what's going to happen, you're going to run into, you know, something some, something buffering that college football, whatever it may be, okay? This show will not be I, – I imagine this show will not be on the priority list as high as Dynamite. I think this will be a sh- another an additional show, kind of like Sunday Night Heat, kind of like, you know, what Saturday – what th- not Thunder, um – uh, kind of like what a uh, WCW Saturday Night was in, in the old days, basically using this platform to push mid carters and to also push storylines to some degree. Also, and here's, this is another thing that I was discussing on Twitter earlier today. You can use this show 
Um, now, when they do pay per views once every every few months as a pre show prior to oh, the pay per view. You know what I'm saying? So you put at 6.05, pay-per-view starts at 8 o'clock, you can put some dark matches there at 6 o'clock. Right. Or you make it a two-hour, or make it even a two-hour uh, uh, lead-up to to the pay-per-view. And th- then you can get people to buy, hopefully buy the the, 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 the pay-per-view in those two hours by, by promoting it through right. the, you know, the platform. So there's a lot of things you do with it. I don't think it will be a show to the level of Dynamite, because I think Dynamite should be their A show. This should be a B, this should be a B show, definitely, Maybe of even course. a C show, to be honest with you. It is what it is. Yeah, no. Absolutely agree. King so. so speaking of uh A shows and B shows and whatever, uh Mike, you uh, you had your uh, you invaded the uh Bachelor Beach uh, this past Wednesday, um last week uh last week. Um your your thoughts on the uh seeing AEW up front for the first time? Uh I got to see him before both of you live in person. Fuck Suck you. It, Trebek. Uh <laughs> Of course, the first match I see of my live AEW career is a match featuring Big Swole. Yeah, that's God trolling you. <sighs> so bad. I love it. Thank you, I'm God. So jealous, you Thank you, so God, awesome. for trolling the shit out of Mike right honestly, now on that one. I love it. Honestly, you know how I got through that match, to oh. be honest with you? Who? The two guys behind us that were fucking cracking jokes the entire time were hilarious. <laughs> Okay. Hilarious. They were great. Um yeah, that uh that one was uh that match was meh. Um the show in itself was actually really good with the exception of something um that we knew was gonna suck, and that's anything that includes Brandy Rhodes. Because, you know, Hoover. Yeah, of course. Sucking it up. Um Honestly, they're the 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 show was well paced for the live audience. It was not one of those that was like slow and drawn out, and there's a lot of dead time in between. Um, so that was a definite plus um, from that aspect. Um, I will say this: the one thing that did not make a lot of sense um, that I didn't really like was the uh, at the end uh, another. Uh, a dark match or yeah for AEW. Um none of those none of the elite guys were in it. The the final match before uh they all came out and did their t shirt toss and merchandise stuff and mm-hmm. pandered to the crowd was Michael Nakazawa versus Kip Sabian and the floodgates to the exits opened. Bad idea. Yeah. That one was bad. Um I thought that you would have finished a little bit better than Michael Naka, Naka Nakazawa. But, you'll, you'll get it. Yeah. You'll get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that sounds. I mean, I, I've not been to a SmackDown taping. I don't think ever. Now that I think about it, but that sounds like when they used to do like two hundred five live after SmackDown, and like three fourths <laughs> of the crowd either fell asleep or went home. Yeah. Yeah. That that one that one that one sucked a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Um, other than that, I mean, I just, it was one, one of those that was uh, the card itself. Like I said, it was really good. I had a good time. We had good seats. Um, actually, there actually wasn't probably a bad seat in that entire building. Um, so I was a big fan of it. Um, let's see. Uh, the tag title, the tag four way match was really, really cool. Um, those guys bumped and flipped and did all kinds of crazy things. Um, so that was pretty fun. Um, the dark, the dark stuff was uh, interesting. There was a really good match between Joey Janela and um, what Joey face. I'm trying to remember now. I'm going back in my head, I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, now I'm drawing a blank. I don't remember. I I text you, Joe. Do you remember who it was? Um, who wait, against who? Janela. Oh, I don't. Because even even I text you, and you're like, "Wow, that's, uh, it seems like that could be a good match." Was it was it Ray Phoenix? Yes, that's who it was. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Ray Phoenix looks like he got dinged up in that match too. It looks like he, I don't know if he like leg, like legit got hurt, but something was not right. Because I think I even texted that to you. I was like, "He looks yeah. dinged up." Yeah, that match was actually really good. So um, I'm not going to spoil too much of it because I want you guys to actually watch the show and watch Dark. Those out there listening to the show, so. Um, if you have a chance to go, I would I would give it a, a highly suggestion to to go. Um, 
trust me, if there was anyone that would tell you to not go to something, it would definitely be me out of the three of us because uh, it's just who I am. But yeah, if you have the opportunity to go to an AEW show live and see it and see uh, the the experience, I would. Um, only thing is, in the future, if they come back, I'd like for them to go somewhere different than that stadium. Um, they had really crappy food, and there was only one merchandise stand, so that kind of sucked because the line was like wrapped around the building. So it was almost like an hour and a half to wait for like merchandise. Um, but I got to see it at the end of the show. It's some really cool T-shirts: Jungle Express, Adam Page, uh, Cody. The Bucks. Uh, no Kip Sabian t-shirt or I would have bought it because, you know, super bad. But Yeah, but that, he's, he has to get, like, TV time before he can get a t-shirt. Yeah. He <laughs> has a t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? He has to, he has to get TV time yeah. first. Yeah, 6.05, Saturday, Saturday right. night. I'll say, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say two things. Go ahead. In reaction. Um, number one, they're actually coming to Newark in March. So um, uh, tickets go on sale this Friday. I'm going to try to get tickets myself since you had such a good experience. So we'll see what happens. They're at the Prudential Center, I think, on March like 25th or something like that. Um, and the other thing is, since you're talking about merchandise, I really think NXT is missing a, a real opportunity by not having Shawn Michaels standing at the merchandise table just telling people to keep hands off the merchandise. So, yeah. Oh, my God. It's so corny. Anyway, let's get to the takes of the week. Um, I think we uh, decided I will start first because mine is going to be basically a review of Raw this past week. Now, I had watched Raw in a little bit. Um, and this because of obviously we discussed it on the, on the podcast. I believe, was it last week we did the uh, whole balancing the wrestling schedules? By the way, is the, is the clock running on, Mike? I'll start as soon as I get it up. So just keep talking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so you know, I I made an effort this week to, to watch Raw pretty uh, first. Normally, I wait till like Thursday to watch my wrestling content because it's Monday through Wednesday. It's kind of, kind of tough for me to do that. Um, and then when I Wednesday passes, I want to watch AW first and then NXT. For some reason, because Joe saying that Raw was amazing this week, and then somebody else telling me the Raw was amazing this week, it's like you know what? Let's change shit up a little bit. Let's start Raw first. Okay, and I watched Raw. Granted, I watched the edited version because I watched it on Hulu because it was an hour and a half as opposed to two, as opposed to three hours, which actually is really three minutes less when you can, when you need to cut out the commercials. But anyway, great show, great show. Um, one of the best shows I've seen in quite a while, actually. Um, I love what they're doing with the Seth Rollins, you know, heel turn, and of course with the AOP, and now and now Buddy Murphy's a part of that now. Um, at the end of the show, I thought that was great. Um. You know, obviously the the build up for Oscar and uh, and Becky Lynch I like that too. The the, the the contract signing and then of course you know when Oscar you know, throws the green you know spits the green mist in her face again and I thought it was a little corny though they had Becky out there you know talking out out on the mic after it'll happen out there. I rather I rather her done it backstage like the old school days. You know, be all pissed off. Um, but otherwise the build up was great. Um, let me see what else. Um, that, that sent on by my the, by Kevin Owens off the top of the raw stage was pretty sick actually. Kevin Owens is amazing. I'm sorry, Kevin Owens. For, the, the, the shit he does for a guy his size. <laughs> I mean, I, I know what you should be now. Kevin Owens, the shit he does for, for a guy his size. Oh yeah. I mean, well, he's always been like that. He's no, no, I know, there. but I'm still fucking amazed. I'm yeah. like, dude, do, do, do you realize how big you are, dude? And, and, and he does like with, the, yep. with Rex Abandon, like fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Um, but. Uh, that was great. Um, let me see what else from the show I loved. Um, they didn't care. I mean, again the the Lana stuff is whatever. That's just you know it's just, that's filling time. I, I, I you know I, I don't waste time bitching about that anymore. Any you know at this point because it's 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 a, it's a waste of time. I, I it is what it is. It, it's just filling three hours of P- TV time. If Vince had his way, he'd only do two hours. But that's not that's not the situation. Um, let me see what else. Uh, Brock. Oh, the best part of the night. Brock Lesnar and R-Truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was great. And then Brock actually speaking at the end. When after he, uh, at five... <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. But R-Truth is amazing. By the way, happy birthday, R-Truth. I, By the way, happy birthday, I, R-Truth today. It's his birthday. So, um, yeah. But I, I've I was... always appreciated... I've always appreciated that they own the fact that Brock Lesnar, like, can't cut a promo. So they're just like... They just they let him say like little things here and there, and it really is perfect. Well, he's like he's like the silent Bob of wrestling. Yeah, he really is. But the funny thing is, like like him and the the the, the 
it's not that it was just him and Brock. It was him, Brock, and, and Paul Heyman. And him and Paul Heyman going back and forth, too. It was just great. It was just, I mean, the, the thing about Raw this week, one thing else, is that I was entertained. I was entertained through comedy, through the, through, through the ring, you know, actual fighting in the ring, through building up, uh, uh, you know, feuds and whatnot. This Raw was the perfect Raw for me because it, it, it gave me everything I wanted in a, t- in a TV show. And for the first time in a while, they, they've done that. And, um, yeah, I was I was really amazed. And at least now the build-up to, to Royal Rumble, we'll see how it goes tomorrow night. We'll record this on Sunday night. The build-up to, uh, the, you know, the take-home show to Royal Rumble, we'll see how it happens. But uh, I was I was really impressed with the episode. We laughed. We cried. And then we had <laughs> maybe one of the worst main events I think I've ever seen. Yeah, that was a little, uh, yeah, the the... The, was it the, the the street fight the fit the fist match whatever. no it's called a fist fight and fist how fight. do you bring weapons how do you bring weapons to a fist fight yeah that's kind of weird actually yeah if you're gonna bring weapons to a fist fight the only acceptable hands and fists are the incredible hulk ones <laughs> hmm. the big green fluffy ones that's the only ones that are acceptable um also i will say this and i'm looking at this right now on on a website that tracks the match times how in the hell did that bobby last year receive match be the longest match of the night when we had a really good triple threat match between Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles, and Randy Orton to open the show. I can't really good uh, Mike, Mike, Buddy Murphy match. I can't tell you. I fast forwarded the fucking match, buddy. <laughs> oh, shit. See, sorry. I, mean, I, I didn't I'm watch a, the full thing either. I'm, I'm going to say one match. thing, though. I'm going to say one thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend the Rusev and, and Lashley stuff for a second. And right. I know that seems weird because I'm not saying it's good. Okay? Like, I'm definitely not saying it, it, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Right, but I have to give it credit. It actually gives these people a purpose for being on TV, and I appreciate that. Do I wish that the storyline was better and the acting was better and Bobby Lashley had eyebrows? Yes, all of those things. <laughs> alopecia, but, bro. Alopecia. Right. Well, hey, but all I will say is that I do still appreciate that they're at least have a purpose for being on TV and a reason. And I think Lana, Lana's acting is getting to the point where it's so bad that like, like it's not quite like the movie cats, but it's so bad that it's kind of entertaining. <laughs> so cats. Oh God, that movie first was off, so bad. All right. First off, that movie sounded terrible. Um, that movie's on the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. I'm not kidding. Worse than Geely. It, it was, I actually didn't even hate Geely. Yeah, no, this was, cats was the worst, <laughs> piece of shit i've ever seen in my life <laughs> would you say would you say that it's equivalent to cat poop um i've seen cat poop that i like better oh, okay then uh okay so back to the raw raw thoughts here um so the the thing i i guess the biggest grief i have with bobby lashley and Alana and all that stuff was um honestly the the person that looks the dumbest out of this entire thing is the person that they've been giving vignettes to and trying to rebuild and that's Liv. Um, yeah. Liv, Liv, Liv was supposed to be in Rusev's corner. She shows up at the end. Gets taken out by a flying Coca-Cola and a throw into the barrier. Really? I mean... This person, this person is supposedly a love-scorned woman. And she gets taken out by a Coca-Cola and a ringside barrier. Doesn't make her look any better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, supposedly they're going to have a mixed tag match probably on Raw this week. Um, yes. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully that goes better. See, the thing is, is like Joe said, I- I'm happy that the four of them are on TV because it's like, hey, let's give these people a chance. But I With wish reason. The, With purpose. I, yeah, I wish the like the, the gimmick itself was better. And it's not to blame any of the four of them because they're really doing what all they can with a kind of sh- shit hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but- you know... But like the funny thing is, right? Like it, it, right? Like it's crappy, but it's also sort of the best thing that Bobby Lashley's done in a long time. Yeah. Oh, I remember when Bobby Lashley resigned to me and you both with each other. Like, oh yeah, he's definitely going to be the one that beats Brock Lesnar. No, he's in a love angle with Rusev and Lana. Right. Yeah, we missed the boat. I don't necessarily hate the angle. I hate the execution of the angle more than else. No, that see, I don't sense. even know if necessarily I hate the angle. I don't know if I necessarily hate the execution of it. I hate the fact that the writing team is that bad that they can't take five minutes to make the the uh, lines and what's actually going on in it like better. 
Like I feel like that would be better. Like if you had another female, another female doing it, instead of Lana doing that. If he let's say he switch roles instead of have have Alana do what she does. No, I think that, I think that gimmick, I think that gimmick was going to suck regardless. Yeah, no, actually, I think it'd be worse if another person was doing it than Lana. Because like I said, she's so bad that it's sort of entertaining in a weird way. Yeah, if I think someone else, actress, we'd be fun. right? Like I think I think someone else that could actually like perform better would would just make it feel extremely mediocre, as opposed to like, oh, cool, car crash time. Yeah, because uh, here's the thing: if you if you wasted, and I'm gonna use the word wasted. Uh, another person's gimmick or time yes. with yeah. that, you'd be like, why isn't this person like in the ring? Like, if you plug out Lana and plug in a, I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna reel off a couple of names, like an Alexa Bliss or a Bailey or somebody of that mindset, you're like, well, why is this person being wasted in this shit gimmick? Like, it doesn't make any sense. But you know, and Liv is has gotten better in the ring from when she started, so I can't necessarily even say Liv. Uh, but Lana's in-ring uh, work is about as good as me uh, playing left guard in the National Football League. Non-existent. Um, Wait, is she so, an actual wrestler? Lana? She's wrestled before. Okay. She, not well. well. That's what I'm saying. She's wrestled before. I mean, so has Snooki. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are we really going there? Possibly I mean, better than Lana, let's be honest. I mean, Maria Menudos has a WrestleMania win. Yeah. So where's, Snooki. where's she gonna be? I mean, I know I know Michael is pretty much gone now, but is she still part of the company? Who? Maria Menounos? No, 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 no. no, no, no that's Maria. Maria. That's Maria. Maria. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Menounos is, the, is, the, is the, the other chick. I'm sorry. That's the other. Uh, Maria Menounos is chick. the actress. And I know that. Yeah, that's. Is that Jill? Are you thinking other? of Maria Canales? Can, right. I'm, saying, I'm sorry. I heard Maria. I really was going to Canales yeah. immediately. That may have been the worst news. Maria, Maria. Months. Yeah. You remind me of a West Side Story. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it's not no, Ma- yeah, Maria Canellis is still on the roster. Uh Mike just got moved, I think, to the NXT roster and was teaming up with somebody at house shows recently. Oh wow, okay. How interesting. Um let me see if I can figure it out real quick. Oh, Tony Nice, the premier athlete. So, oh. so what, what, Mike, do you like do you like the show overall though? Would you did you enjoy the show overall? Or was it typical? Uh, I would say it had had its peaks and its valleys. Okay. Um I enjoyed the triple threat match to open it and that opening segment, which Randy Orton was freaking hilarious. That was hilarious. He was great. Um, the 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 Ricochet Mojo Raleigh thing, uh, it was it was there. Um, the Bob Rusev junk was well, it was junk. Uh, Brock Lesnar and r Truth was fun, and then, then Mojo wins the twenty four seven title and basically says he's not running. Yeah, okay, dude, whatever. Um, no one cares. Uh, the Singh brothers lasted thirty five seconds. I think they danced longer than they actually were in that match. Uh, I'm always a fan of Alistair Black versus Buddy Murphy, so uh, yep. And then match. the best kept, and then the best kept secret in, in WWE joined uh, the Office of Pain in the Monday Night Messiah. So um, and see, do you like me, that move? Like, I like the like, move. Actually, you like it, Joe? Buddy Murphy? Yeah, no, I love it. Honestly, to me, that was it was great because you honestly were able to get two guys like really over and continue to push them. And that's one of the things that I really liked about Raw this week too is it felt like there was a real drive towards getting more people to be important. Like like Drew McIntyre at the beginning of the show. Or like Buddy Murphy and Alistair Black. I mean, you have Alistair Black beat Buddy Murphy and honestly I feel like six months ago that basically would have been like it for Buddy Murphy at this point. He'd have been like, okay, he lost again, who cares? But they made sure that he had a purpose by the end of the show. And, you know, it kind of matters more than if he had just beaten Aleister Black. So it, it actually really worked. Yeah. And I love the Seth heel turn. It's fucking fun. The Monday Night Messiah thing. I'm, I'm all yeah, on that he's one. He's better as a heel than he is as a By the way, and, and you know what? I've gone from, like, just being sick of the guy three months ago to, like, you know what? I'm back on the bandwagon, buddy. Seriously. Yeah, I'm with you. I will take. I will definitely take like heel sort of in some version of like the Albanian mafia Seth Rollins over Becky Lynch is my boyfriend Seth Rollins. So yeah. like I'm with this one. I I I, I can tell you in my way. This was like within the weeks after I started watching again last summer. How much I detested that whole thing with her. Oh, me Becky. too. You have oh no God, idea. me too. 
it made me like it really it made me dislike both of them. It's like, really bad. Here we are with our belts, are so important. Here's my here's my world title, and here's and here's your woman's title. Like like okay, stop. Enough. Right. Exactly. And what, how much more time do I've got, Mike? Uh, two minutes. Dos. Minuto. Okay. Well, I'm, I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm to me, I, I think the most. I think I'm most excited about the stuff with Drew McIntyre. Yes. I think that depending on where they go with it, they have such an opportunity. I really feel like he could be one of like the biggest faces in the company, and and all they have <laughs> to do is like pull that trigger, and and it, it feels like they want to. So let's see. Well, I think the fact that they they, they have been involved with him and with Styles and Randy. Yeah, um, I think saying, like, is is the is the kind of the you know you know they, 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 they used this term back in the eighties with, with Hogan, sp- spray some Hulk dust on Macho, right? Hulk dust on Warrior, you know, to kind of give him that little edge, little nudge. Randy's Randy's a main man, so is AJ Styles. So is AJ, yeah. You know, so you so get now, to, that... yeah, so you get to to Drew McIntyre. I I tell you, McIntyre, this is the year of McIntyre twenty twenty. I, I I really feel it. I would so, love to see him win the Rumble, and I'd love to see him win the World Title at WrestleMania. He has a look. Time. He's grabbed the mic. Oh, he's he... gotten jacked as hell recently, too. Yeah. So the uh, the Raw brand had a house show yesterday, looking at the results of it. Uh, Viking Raiders over the OC of AJ Styles and Luke Gallows. Oh, wow. Drew, Drew McIntyre over No Way Jose. Andrade over Cedric and Alexander. Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Natalia over Sarah Logan and the Kabuki Warriors. Liv Morgan and Rusev over Bobby Lashley and Lana in a mixed tag match. Hmm. So they're giving that match away at house shows. That's nice. Uh, Aleister Black defeats Buddy Murphy by disqualification, which lost. then led to a eight-man tag match between the Authors of Pain, Buddy Murphy, and Seth Rollins, who defeated Aleister Black, Samoa Joe, and the Street Profits. Oh, interesting. And the show the day before was pretty pretty similar. With the only difference is being McIntyre defeated Cedric Alexander and Andrade defeated Ricochet. And, and, okay, now, and that was last night, right? Yes. Did, did did you really just complain that they were giving away the mixed tag match on house shows? Do you really want to see that match without Lana getting to practice first? Fuck no. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to see that match in general. Right. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, like, don't give It'd be it better away if anywhere. Take it there. back. Yeah, but is it, is, so this week's gonna be, I think, Lana and and Lashley against uh, Liv and Rusev, right? So this what you're telling me is, is my MVP of next week's show is gonna be all of us for sitting through that match and not. <laughs> you guys can pick the Rumble winners. I'm gonna take us. <laughs> is that the time? Time. Okay, uh, Mikey. That's sec- great stuff coming up here because uh, you're gonna be about to preview the Royal Rumble, right? Yes. Yes, we're going to segue right now into the predictions for the 2020 Royal Rumble. Um, honestly, uh, I'm pumped for it. Uh, this will be the second straight WrestleMania that I get to hang out with Joe Lopez. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be in uh, Houston. We'll be sitting on my couch in Florida. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have some fun doing it. Um, big things have been announced so far for this match, uh, for this pay-per-view, I should say. The Men's Royal Rumble, it's always 30 men. Uh, with a chance to fight for either of the world titles. The Women's Royal Rumble returns again. 30 women, uh, their shot for a title at WrestleMania 36. Main event matches. <laughs> Yawning part yeah, podcast. podcast, no big deal. <laughs> um, so I couldn't hold that one in. Uh, the Fiend Bray Wyatt will defend the, the Universal Championship against Daniel Bryan in a strap match. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Asuka in a singles match for the Raw Women's title. King Corbin versus Roman Reigns in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Shorty G is going to get decapitated by Sheamus in a singles match. Yeah. And Bailey versus Lacey Evans for the SmackDown Women's title. So what we'll do here is we can pick who we think is going to win each match. Uh, and then we'll we'll talk about the Rumble matches themselves. Maybe see if there's uh, someone we think is going to make a surprise return or entry. Uh, and who we think is going to win those. We'll wrap with that. So let's start with the SmackDown Women's title match. Uh, the champion, Bailey versus Lacey Evans. Evans got the win over her Friday night on SmackDown after Sasha Banks had an ankle injury or they're just making this the most drawn-out thing ever in the history of man. Um, 
I think this one, uh, I'll give my prediction first on this one. I'm going to take Bailey to retain uh, the women's title. I'll go Bailey as well, too. Um, but I expect a lot of Gaga here, too, also. I can see Sasha get involved in this match. Um, mm, radio Gaga? Yeah. Radio Gugu. Um, I think Lacey, I think the, the focus here is to put Lacey over as much as possible. She's, she's, she's ready to turn to her face now. She's starting to get even more, even this week, got what, more crowd participation. People are starting to really like her now. Um, I think they, they're really trying to make her the, ne- the next baby face of the women's division on SmackDown. And I think this is another way to push that. And this can go probably as far as it's WrestleMania. This is where you can go into WrestleMania, to be honest with you. So I like Bailey with some Gaga. Maybe uh, Sasha comes and cheats, whatever. Um, I'll take Lacey to win. I don't think she wins the title because I do think the feud continues, but I think she's going to win the match. Okay. Basically, like DQ, right? Yeah, yeah. Just basically anything that's a non title change. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like DQ, count out, something, some, some, some tomfoolery, but Ooh. I think that she wins. By the way, and tomfoolery has been announced. Real quick, before you go to the next match, um, how do you guys feel with Lacey Evans' uh, face turn? You like, is like it? I like it actually. Mm-hmm. She's doing more than walking out and waving us. I think yeah, better, I agree. So I, mean, I agree. 100%. Yeah, I, I, I think she's a better face than a heel. Honestly, yeah, I think so too. She's easy to root for because of the whole like American hero thing. And exactly. In the military, mm-hmm. and she was in the military, and all that fun stuff. So like, she's easy to root for. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Uh, so thumbs up for that. Uh, I already gave away my prediction in this match. Um, I don't think I could be any more obvious with my prediction in this match. Shorty G is going to get decapitated by Sheamus. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. same. All right, we, both, we, all, we, we all take Shamus. That's one of the – when I saw that that was announced as a match on on Rumble, I really was kind of like, huh? Yeah, like, what? Right. <laughs> but yay, Shorty G getting, like, a singles match on a big pay-per-view. Shorty Dang. G, Shorty G, Shorty G. All right, uh, Falls Count Anywhere match. This stipulation was uh, won by um, the man, the myth, the legend, Roman Reigns, uh, on Raw. Uh, or excuse me, on SmackDown, SmackDown on Friday night. Yeah, he beat he beat Roberto Woods in his return match. Uh, Glorious. Yeah, clown. Uh, Reigns versus Corbin. Falls Count Anywhere. Uh, I believe. In my heart of hearts, that this match is going to be better than I kind of think it has any right to be. I'm going to take the king. I'm taking Baron Corbin to beat Roman Reigns. Basically, again, because he won the last time he on T, it was a TLC. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Um, this is tough. Um, double DQ. <laughs> double DQ. Hell yeah, double DQ in a fall in a uh, fall come anywhere match. I love it. Wait, wait, is, is, <laughs> wait, wait, no, fall anywhere is it? Is it? Uh, is it no DQ? It's not ended match? by double DQ, buddy. <laughs> it's, no, it's no DQ, right? You know, it's, it's no DQ. You fuck. I didn't know that. How do you not know a false count anywhere is a? I didn't, well, first of all, I, I didn't. Well, I didn't finish SmackDown, so I didn't see stipulations on, would, on the match. Would yet, you? So. Would you like another chance at picking a winner? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I, oh, I didn't finish SmackDown. Like nope, I told you. No. Nope. Nope, you're locked into a double disqualification. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, jeez. Uh, Ernest is 0 for 1 in his predictions already. I'm 10 and 2, my 10 to the playoffs, though. Yeah, um. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split the difference. I'm, I'm going to King. I'm going to King. I'm going to King. I think, I think the focus for right now with the company is to keep Roman Reigns as, as much as a face as possible. Like, sympathy. He loses, gets more sympathy for the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Keep building it up. So I think King wins again. People hit King I, more. I think the only way Roman loses that match is if he then wins the Rumble later. So, dear God, Roman, please beat Corbin. All right, so you're taking Roman Reigns. Yep. You don't want him to win the Royal Rumble. Make I, really don't. I understand that. Yeah, we don't want Roman. Roman should not win the Rumble at all. Should not. But next, go ahead. Next one. Yeah. Uh, Raw Women's Championship, Becky Lynch versus Asuka. The- Match I'm looking for the match I'm most looking forward to watching of the, of the night. See, this is the thing with me. I always say this about Oscar matches, and then something happens, and I'm just like, I thought there could have been more. Hmm. I'm not just saying it's her fault all the time, but there have just been times where I've just been like, that match could have been three times better if something would have happened. 
So what do you got in this one? Uh, I'm going to take the the, title, the champion to retain because of something that I'm going to speak on when we get to the Rumbles. Okay. Well, I hope Asuka wins because I'm, I'm falling in love with her now all of a sudden. She's, she's amazing. But yeah, yeah. I think Becky... What's it mean, what's it mean being Asian girls these days? I don't, I don't get it. Rio and all her? Fuck. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, take Becky, un- unfortunately, because, you know, they just can't lose the title just yet. I don't get how you say unfortunately. Like, there aren't many more women in on the Raw brand that's that much better than she is, especially in ring. Did we have this discussion like a couple weeks ago about Becky? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. When you guys are talking about like her talking on a fucking microphone I'm, I'm talking about in ring. I'm taking Asuka for the record. Oh, okay. To win the title I, I think too? She, yeah, I think she wins the title. I think that she gets to go 2-0 and o against Becky at two Royal Rumbles in a row, which I think actually built... Like, I could see them going to WrestleMania with those two, and that builds that story. Yeah, I... You know, it's funny, I like that, because, like, I think they want to avoid another Charlotte Flair Becky Lynch thing. That's yes. what for. Do you want to avoid I don't that? Think, I, don't think you're, I don't think you're getting that match either, but okay. No, I, I hope not, because we've seen it before. I, I'm hope, we're just trying to avoid that, I guess. And I guess having Asuka in this little feud now also can avoid that, so... I like the feud. It's great. Yay, it's there. Universal title match. Fiend. Brian. Strap match. Can anyone explain to me why this is a strap match? Randomly. Because Dan, Don, Ryan, Don Ryan requested it. I, I understand that, but why? why, why, why? <laughs> he has a question. I'm answering, I'm answering it. <laughs> that was what... I, that was, ooh, ooh, I, I know, that, teacher, that I know, like, teacher, I know. <laughs> that was like that was like when um when people go on like Facebook or anywhere on social media and it's like, oh, who'd win a match between this person and this person? The answer is whoever the booker decides. Like, wait a second, do you not know how wrestling works? I just don't get the logic behind a strap match. Me either. Why? I, I, I remember. I remember when he, when he said that. I was like, no, please, no. Maybe so they just, just had some straps laying around. So is this your traditional touch four corners and then the match is over? Or is this like beat the shit out of each other with the strap and then like pin somebody? Oh, God. I didn't even think that could be the four corner crap. I need to know the rules. I need to know the rules of this before I really fucking say something I'm going to regret. Wyatt's going to win. There's no way Wyatt loses the title already. Yeah, Bray Wyatt wins no matter what. All right, then we won't even go into any more. Yeah, no point. He's winning the title. So who gives a shit? Exactly. All right, uh, so let's start with the Men's Royal Rumble. Um, I want to talk about this one a little bit more uh, in depth. Um, some guys that have been announced so far, Brock Lesnar is going to enter at number one. Roman Reigns has been announced. AJ Styles, Eric Rowan, Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Elias, King Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, Otis and Tucky, Rusev, Bob, Alistair, Murphy, Strowman, and the Intercontinental Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, so that's what, like 12 guys? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, like that, yeah. 12, 14, 16. That's actually like 18 guys, almost 20. So that leaves like 10 guys that haven't been announced. Um, NXT? Honestly, maybe? Oh, there has to be some NXT guys in here, but there's also some guys that are like noticeably missing that like you're like, well, I feel like they need to be in the match. Seth Rollins. Oh, yeah. yeah name not announced yet um he's the most noticeable that hasn't been announced andrade the united states champion has not been announced yet either um interesting that the intercontinental champions in but the u.s champions not um we'll see if he gets in uh so notice no, notably here i want to say i was thinking that they were going to do 10 10 and 10 obviously that's not going to happen because there have already been 11 raw names announced so let's say in a hypothetical world, there's five NXT people added to the to the Royal Rumble. Who are the five names that you think are going to be NXT's uh, entries into this year's Royal Rumble? Keith Lee, Dajakovic. Um... I promise you, Matt Riddle's getting in there. Yeah, and Riddle. We're gonna get a moment with him and Brock. Somebody from the Undisputed Era. I don't know. It has, it has to be Adam Cole. It could be Roderick Strong. Somebody from the, from the um. Undisputed Era being there. And, um. Oh. How about, uh. Who? 
No, not Champa. Champa. No, not Champa. No. No. At least my my prediction is like, well, he won't be on it. That's my prediction. You have lost your goddamn See, mind. We had we had, we got Gargano last year, which is what makes me think we get Champa this year. Especially since Champa was like digged up last year. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like he couldn't really be in it last year, but like Gargano got that shot, so that's why I think Champa gets like the chance this you, time. Would it, would it be his first time in it? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't consider yeah, that's that then. exactly yeah. Then Champa, I, I I didn't consider that. I'm sorry. Well, it's, we forgive you. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, see, see, the funny thing is, is we pick like similar guys. Like, I think it's going to be Champa Riddle. Uh, Lee? Keith Lee, Dijakovic, and um, you know, I don't think anybody from the other Sweden era needs to be in this. I I'm gonna pick. I, I'm gonna do something crazy, and I'm gonna pick like somebody from like the UK brand because the UK guys are gonna be over here Walter? for Worlds Collide. Walter's the UK champion though, so I don't know if it makes sense to put him in the Royal Rumble. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, he he'd be a cool guy to have in the match, um, but I just don't know if I necessarily believe that that's Lars Sullivan. Okay, but wait, but to oh, be Lord. fair, isn't the, isn't isn't the UK title really at like the same level as like the US title and like the oh, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing with that, but for some reason, WWE will look at the logic different. Huh? Hmm. It's the main it's the main title on a on a separate brand. They'll look at it weird. Trust me, that it's WWE. Um, no, but I can see uh, a Tyler Bate or a Trent Seven or a Pete Dunn um, being involved. Hmm. I can see I like, Pete Dunn. I can, yeah, I, see, I, see, I see Pete Dunn. I can see Pete Dunn. I like the Bruins. So like, oh, you know who I can see too. Now we've named like everyone in the Damian Priest. I can see Damian Priest. Yeah, yeah. I knew you were gonna say that. Damian Priest. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, he's big. He's a big guy. Like they like that. We really do. Uh, okay, <laughs> predictions for who we think is going to win the men's Royal Rumble, so we can move on to the women's. Brock. Drew. Brock. Why would you take Brock Lesnar? This cause piss you off. I know you hate him. <laughs> no, uh, Drew McIntyre. I, I I already said I said this like months ago. Um, that. If if they play the cards right, Drew will be the guy next year, and, and it starts a Royal Rumble. I mean, so I wanted to pick Drew McIntyre, but you know, from a logic standpoint, we can't have like seven thousand picks that are all the same. So we all picked Sheamus, we all took the Fiend. Um, so I'm gonna go really like off, I guess, off the beaten path. I guess here is the best way to say it. Beat it. Um, I don't want to pick him. Ugh, Brock. No, Roman. <laughs> It's 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 either it's either McIntyre or Reigns for me right now in reality. Um, oh fuck it, I'll take Drew. Yeah, I mean it's logical. I mean, yeah, but what is WWE that's been logical? They put Lana in a yeah. fucking storyline where she got divorced from her husband. But they got again. They got to <laughs> fill three hours of fucking Clown. TV time. Clown. They're gonna fill five hours of a pay per view. I know. Lars Sullivan, bring back. Lars Sullivan comes back biggest, this weekend. Lars Sullivan comes back. Here's the biggest prediction of the entire weekend. Brock Lesnar will be eliminated by a member of the NXT roster. Ooh, Keith Lee. Don't know. I'm. That's my prediction. Could we see a Keith Lee Brock Lesnar match in the future? As that, you can see Matt, that, that you can see Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle's not. He's, they're going to have a moment in the Rumble. He's not going to eliminate him. Kane Velasquez is going to eliminate Brock Lesnar. Oh come on! No, don't stop. I don't want it. I don't like looking at that man. I swear to God, if Kane Velasquez wins the Royal Rumble, I'm going to fucking puke. Oh, I don't think he's going to win the Rumble. I think though he's going to come out and eliminate Brock. And even if that doesn't become a WrestleMania match, I think it's at least like an Elimination Chamber match. Wait, wait. You, you think Kane will fucking like? No, never mind. That won't make any sense. But they, look, I don't, they think, Kane, I don't even think Kane man. will be in the Rumble. They signed that man for, like, millions of dollars, and so far he's only wrestled once and not even in America. So, like, they got they got to get his, their money out of him. Okay, fine. That... Have him sell jerseys and shit. Hands on merchandise. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Come on. All right, women's wait, match. Wait, 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 wait. You're giving shit about them hiring Kane Velasquez and you want him to sell merchandise, but you sit here and you try to sell us on, on like, half of, like, the – Terrible fucking wrestlers on Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Give me Kane Velasquez because at least 
his shit in ring, he's actually trying to get better. Where half of these guys are like, I'm going to pull off the same seven moves I've done for the last four years of my career. Okay. Trash. <laughs> oh, God. What's more trash? The, the the terrible seven moves of Doom or the Nightmare Collective? Oh, God. I'm going, I'm going to sleep now. Goodbye. <laughs> exactly. That's my point. Nightmare Collective. Uh, Honestly, that's your girl. She's that's hot. Your girl. That's hot. She's hot. That's that's where it ends for me. Ugh. Lana's hot, but fucking she can't extra shit. Both of them. Both of them trash in ring. I agree with you, hundred percent. Wait a minute, that. Rumble match. Seeing how we segue to the Nightmare Collective somehow. Uh, let's see who's been announced for that. There hasn't been many announced for that one. There's been like uh, four people announced for that. Charlotte, Charlotte Flair, Sarah Logan, and uh, Twisted Bliss of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Who is eating something out of a wrapper? Because that's all I can hear. That's a joke. I'm eating. I'm eating flaming hot Cheerios. Uh, Cheetos. I apologize. That's the best. That's all I can hear is it made me hungry. That's why only reason why I said anything. I put in you on mute before, but then like we were talking about shit I cared about. So the collective, yeah, okay. the Nightmare Collective. That's what it is. Oh yeah, fuck the Nightmare Collective. Uh, okay, women's Royal Rumble prediction. Um, who can I go first? Uh, hold on. Let's let's talk about who from NXT do you think makes an appearance. Oh, cool. Can I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Shayna Baszler. She's going to win. Booyah! Yeah, that's what I was picking. I, I, like, I love that prediction. She lost the title to uh, Rhea Ripley. This is like her bounce back. Winning Rumble. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking love exactly. it. I fucking love it. In fact, I, I can see a three-way team... Between okay, so I can see a three way at the end. The last three girls standing uh, be Rhea, Baszler, and maybe sh- either Charlotte or somebody else. Wrong. Wh- oh, maybe so- I don't know. Whoever who- who's the clear so far? What? Who's who's the clear so- for the for the match so far? I just told you. Yeah, the four people he named. What do you mean? Wait, 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 how, 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 wait. Let me ask you a question. Don't. How many? Wh- how many? Because uh, obviously there's there's thirty right for, for the men's side, right? Oh no. Yes. Okay. There's thirty for the women too. Okay. That's why I'm asking. Who do you think from NXT is going to show up? Obviously, you're probably going to get Shayna Baszler because that's who me and Joe are predicting to win it. But, uh, me obviously, too. you're probably obviously you're probably going to get like Tony Storm. You may get like. Me and him. Uh, uh, you need fillers, dude. Maybe, yeah. You need some fillers. Yeah. Maybe you need fillers. That. Honestly, Bianca Belair. Filler. What? She's the number one contender for the women's title. I'm the same. Yeah, but people Filler don't my watch. Ass. No, 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 no. I agree. But people, on, on people who, but people who don't watch NXT are gonna see that and not know who she is. They'll know who the, the top two girls are: Rhea and fucking Shayna. That's about it. So you Trash. need you, those. Those are the way to get them over. Those are the way to get like people like Bianca over. Um, people who, people who watch Raw SmackDown and watch NXT. Was it Bianca and last year's Rumble too? Or am I thinking wrong? I don't know. I think she was. I think she was. Hold on. I'll look. I'm bored. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was. Are we over time already on this topic? Yeah, of course we are. When was the last time we went under time ever? <laughs> so no, lucky she I was not. school tomorrow. What? Oh, no? She wasn't. Oh. Hmm. The NXT members were. Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai, Casey Cantanzaro, Candice LeRae, Kyrie Sane, Zia Lee. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I think um, I think the, the the fun part about this is there's some wrestlers that were in last year's Royal Rumble that have been AWOL, mm-hmm. um, either injury or other things. Uh, my prediction, my bold prediction for the 2020 Royal Rumble. Is the return of Naomi? Oh, I didn't. I, I I forgot that she was missing. But being honest, I I just think she's. I think she makes a return. Um, the Usos no, just sense. made their I just, return. I haven't even noticed that she was gone. I feel bad saying that, but how dare you, Joe? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that that makes the the logical sense. Um, and maybe maybe, and this is a. A big maybe. Um, someone's gonna challenge for Natty's uh, record in the uh, longest in the match. I can see that. Last year, NXT had three members in the men's rumble. 
It was Gargano, Pete, and Alistair. So yeah. Well, uh, and you know, well, the trend with us continues. Cause I think we all three agree that Shayna wins the whole thing. I think she makes the, the most sense. The only scenario where Shayna doesn't win is if Ronda Rousey shows back up. That was, I was thinking maybe she Ronda could be a, a surprise entry in the Rumble, and it would lead to Ronda versus Becky one on one. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know if that's the route they really want to go right now. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not cheering for it, that's for sure. But I'm just saying, if Ronda shows up, there's no way she doesn't win. Doesn't win. Yeah, uh, that I agree with. That that one, that that take, I will 100 percent agree with. Yeah. Um. So, all right. It's so not even final, a hot take. That's just obvious. <laughs> final final predictions. Uh, myself, I have Bailey, Sheamus, Corbin, Lynch, The Fiend, Drew, and Shayna. Joe has Lacey Evans to win the match with no title change. Sheamus, Roman Reigns, Oscar, The Fiend, Drew, and Shayna. Ernest has Bailey, Sheamus, Corbin, Lynch, Fiend, McIntyre, Baszler, like myself. Um, no, I, I, double, I have a double DQ, actually. On, no, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, that's right. You got that. <laughs> uh, I think Joe. I think Joe's going to win the prediction game because I think uh, Roman Reigns is actually going to win that match, even though I picked Corbin. That's a gaga on that one, too. Oh, that's going to be like uh, a 37 man. Double countdown. Like Dolph Ziggler, the Revival, fucking all those, all those buddies. You know, not for, not for nothing. We mock. We you were just mocking Ernest for taking a, a double DQ in a false count yeah. anywhere match, but that Hell in a Cell match last year that ended in a DQ. Like I I'm thought it was saying. ruled. I thought it was ruled to be a no contest. I'm just saying it's a Hell in a Cell match. Like it ain't supposed to be a no contest. So like Ernest could be right. We'll see. I'm so never this... giving him that one. I'm never giving him. I'll never get that one. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Drawing dead. All right, that's the time on this one. Uh, so next week you'll hear us uh, talk about our uh, uh, the results, obviously, because we'll be recording right after Rumble. So yep. take take time to write down our, our predictions and see which one of us has the best record. Okay. And, and transition. And it's, it's you? Oh, no, it's uh, Joe. Yes. Um, okay, so the topic I decided to bring to the table this week is related to tag teams. Um, tag team back again. Yeah, there you go. It's been interesting because I feel like this year in particular, there has been a little bit of a resurgence of, and in recent weeks too, um, you've had, you know, you've had DIY kind of reunite on NXT and they're going to be wrestling next Saturday against Mustache Mountain, which is awesome. I um, Johnny Gargano. Yeah, me too. Um... You have the Rock and Roll Express at, like, the tender age of, like, 70. I don't even know how old they actually are. But they're, like, the NWA Tag Team Champions right now, which is pretty cool, actually. It works for that brand, if nothing else. Um, and there's even been rumors of, like, Harlem Heat possibly reuniting. What? And wrestling. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Apparently, the Revival have kind of, like, challenged Booker T, and Booker T has said i think maybe on like backstage or or one of those one of those shows he's been like well i talked to my brother and like it's not impossible i got one more match in me so i mean harlem heat may actually show up in the wwe ring like sooner than later that'll so, be a wrestlemania match it would be it would tell and it would be like five minutes long and it would be an awesome five minutes and the revival would be the perfect ra- opponents for them too all we'd keep doing is raising the roof like we're doing the intro yes. for harlem heat <laughs> so so my topic this week is I, I'm I'm offering the question out to you two, um, and I will answer it too, obviously. But I'm gonna let you guys go first, if I'm being honest. Um, if you could reunite any tag team as ever wrestled, and it doesn't matter if they're both alive right now, like we're just let's throw all logical rules out the window. But if you could reunite any tag team and give them one last run, who would it be, and why? And maybe even where? <laughs> Ernest? Um, I'll let yeah, Ernest go first on this one because I need to... I, okay. I to I, I'm going to shock you guys with this one because this is a tag team I, I felt could have worked long term and I, I, I think they're misused, honestly. Um, I'm going to go total fucking like old school here and pick the powers of pain. Ooh. Warlord and a Barbarian. 
I thought they were misused in WWF, WWE, what do you call it? Um, I know that the Devin and Demolition, they feuded, obviously. Um, they just broke it up because I guess it, they, they felt those guys are better solo, you know, singles wrestlers. But I thought that team could have been dominant. I, I thought that team had a look. They could have been dominant, one of the most dominant teams in the history of the company. And they broke it up for really, really. I, those are one, I, I just one of Vince's worst moves he's ever done, in my opinion. It's interesting. Powers of Pain. I was a big fan of Powers of Pain. Mr. Fuji also managing them too when they, when they turn heel. Yeah, I always like, felt a little bit like they were like Road Warrior ripoffs, but I mean they, they all had were though. Look. All teams were though, pretty much because Road Warriors was so was so influential. Yeah, true. You're right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, what a rush. <laughs> <laughs> Mur- uh, okay, so like I have like multiple like teams that I'd want to see do it. So it's like okay. I, I kinda have like some like decadal uh ones. Uh first up um would probably have to be American Alpha. Yeah. Um those guys they never got a in good run in the main roster. No, they didn't and um, well, you're unfortunately, around? I think that was two thousand and seventeen I think. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah, like and like they had a really good run in NXT, but yeah. then went up to the main roster and like it went nowhere. Yeah, no, it was just like eh, they're gone. Yep. Yep. So, exactly. Yeah. Um. So they're one team that I would like to see get another run together because I thought they had some great in in ring chemistry and I thought they were really fun, uh, in the ring. And basically, Chad Gable has been non existent since. Um, that happened. Yeah, he teamed with Roberto R- Rude, and they they had those matching robes and all that stuff, which was really uh, I don't know, like porn sashes, but <laughs> it was just one of those where I was like, it was there, and then it was gone. Yep. Um, another team that I would have loved to see get another run um, because I thought they were really good in the ring in the nineties, um, and then all of a sudden they just like stopped teaming together. Bart and Billy Gunn, the Smoking Guns. Oh, I know that Billy went on to become badass and teaming with the the, the road the road dog. Um, but I was a really big fan of the Smoking Guns. Um, I thought their gimmick was really cool with like the the fake shoot pistols and all that fun stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, were so, were they real brothers? No, I don't think so. Uh, okay, I'm surprised they're Smoking Guns. So in countryside, I'm Michael. Yeah. I dig them. Um, and uh, the last team that I really have, like, a throwback to, um, you know, and you may be able to uh, give a little bit more insight because I didn't get to watch them really wrestle a lot of matches uh, because I was either not born or kind of just being born. Um, and that is uh, Strike Force. Oh my god! I was just gonna say oh, that. I was just gonna say. I was, gonna, I, was, I was just gonna say that a little while ago too. It's like another team that probably could have been used properly. But you know what happened too? Also, single. Same thing with Powers of Pain. Martel yeah. won single. Santana was good, great single. It's fucking stupid. Also, also, Money Inc was another one. They were good. Until, I like them because 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 Ted. They were. I don't think they ever formally broke up. Ted just got hurt. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Because yeah, he even um, became like IRS's manager after that. Yeah, the million dollar company and all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So yeah, I, th- that one really necessarily didn't split up. Kind of like you know DIY DIY split up. Um, you know, they're more of the they got hurt the same way that uh, Jason Jordan got hurt, which caused the breakup of American Alpha. Right, right. Um, so I guess if I had to think about it, Strike Force would be a team. I don't know. They, they, their, their title run um, in the late 80s, uh, they held the titles for 152 days before losing it to Demolition, which started Demolition's record-breaking run. Um, or record-setting run, I guess I should say. Um, I just thought that, that they were a really good tag team. I thought the that Rick and Tito really worked well together in the couple matches from the, the, the past that I've gone back and watched. Oh. Um, I'm always a sucker for tag team wrestling, um, and I would be remiss if I didn't not think of this, and I'm really dumb for not thinking about this. Uh, I would love a, a final run as a tag team from 
the artist formerly known as El Generico and Kevin Steen. I can see that. Like a real run where they like yes. lost titles and everything. Yes. Like... I want them to be the Raw or SmackDown tag team champions. I want them to but I want I don't want like goofy like heel heat Sami Zayn because like you know I'm talking about how much insert random team here sucks. Right. Like I want like Sammy and Kev- Kevin like going out and like just beating everyone's ass. Hell yeah. Like I want like badass Steen and Generico back. Like if that means Sammy doesn't talk and just goes out there and kicks people in the face like he did when he was Generico, like I'm okay with that. You know, they didn't need the, the they didn't have a ton of great promos in Ring of Honor. But for some no, reason they always put out Generico like, didn't even matches. speak very much, yeah. Yeah. But they always put out good matches. Yes. So, oh um, yes. So that th- th- those are those are a couple of my choices. So yes, I, I really enjoy those. Um, I'm gonna give you guys two. Um, and 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 two because the first one is is the one that like sort of gave gave me this idea, and the other one I just personally would be actually my like top choice. Um, so I sort of. What got me thinking about this was was Arn and Tully, to be honest. And, okay. And the thing is, they're a pretty legendary tag team, right? Like we yep. can all agree on that. They obviously they had a run in the NWA. They had a run in W in um, WWF. Um, they weren't a tag team for very long. Like we kind of all remember them as uh, for their team, and they were fantastic. And you know, we get a little bit of a taste of it with the revival today. But it's not like they were together for, like, 10 years or anything like that. They didn't have, like, an epic run like that. So it would sort of be cool if we could have seen them, you know, get a little bit more time and get maybe get, like, that one final run. I mean, truth be told, I don't know physically how much either one of them can do nowadays, but they're both in under the AEW roof, so... If we got, like, one more match out of them, like, you know, like the way the Rock and Roll Express are working the NWA now, it'd be kind of cool. I don't know that it's even remotely possible, but... Draw, drawing dead. Really? No chance. No chance. I think yeah. Arn, I think, I think Arn has an injury settlement then that he could lose oh. all, all of the money if he, if he wrestles. Yeah. Well... I think, I I think mean, he has one of those. I, I th- if it's that thing, like if it could ha- if it could have happened, and honestly, even more so, like seeing them against the revival would be really fun, like because yeah. that really is like the team that they're sort of based on in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, so that would be a fun match. I feel like that that would be a fun match to the equivalent of like when like TNA had like the Young Bucks against the Hardys. You know what I mean? True. Like that would be fun, and you're right. Like we'll probably, we'll never see it, but like that's one of those fun what ifs, like. If we get those, if, if, if like Arn and Tully ever end up on like a WWE 2K video game that actually works, that could be a fun match to play, you know? Um, so but never. The team, the team I'm going to go with, though, is Please. a little team known as Vicious and Delicious. God damn you. I thought you were going to take the American males. No, but close. I got Bagwell in there. I know you do. Mark is, well, at that point he was uh, Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton. They were the unsung heroes of the NWO. They were a great tag team. They they worked really well together. They had this odd chemistry together that really sort of almost made no sense, but it worked. And I feel like they, they never got a chance. Like, they never had a chance of getting to, like, the WCW tag titles because, you know, at that point it just wasn't going to happen for them. And and then they kind of just stopped being a team. I, I don't even know that they teamed for more than, like, 10 or 11 matches. But, I mean, if Vicious and Delicious showed up in NXT tomorrow and got, like, a last run, I'd be so with it. I can see that. I, I think they were they worked really well together in the ring. I thought, I thought a lot did. of them did. Yeah. No, so, I mean, that's, like, that's one of those things where it's, like, yeah, it was a fun team that, not not never really got a shot like they never they never went further than basically oh hey this is a cool team so it'd be cool to see them actually actually get a shot or would have been cool at least oh it's gone now yeah 
Well, let, yeah. let, me, brain, let me brain busters one, though. That's really good. Yeah. Great. I'm actually watching Royal Rumble 92 in the background. I, just, I forgot the Mountie had the fucking taser. Oh, I love <laughs> that, <laughs> sir. It was, it, was, it was a shock It was the same taser that was used to beat Goldberg. Like, this was, this was, years later. This was also literally days after Shawn Michaels uh, flipped on uh, Mario Gennetti, this event. Oh, like, man. days. Like, literally days. I hope you understand. The Mountie always gets his man. Yes, damn right he does. <laughs> Uh, anything else to add to this topic, or we're done? I think we're done. Okay. Oh, you know what I'll say? I'm not on Twitter, so don't tweet at me, but maybe tweet at the show, anyone who's listening, and give us your choice. But we got MVPs to go through. Hold on, buddy. MVPs. And draft order. Right. Let's do MVPs first and draft order. Okay, you guys are first for MVPs, because... Uh, I'll go quick. This, my MVP this week, actually, I had two, but I forgot the other one. So I'm going to go one for now. Um, my MVP is somebody I've never seen before, but has made his return to to WWE after eight years, and I was impressed with what I saw on SmackDown. John Morrison. Oh, Johnny Friday Night SmackDown, dude. There you go. I I didn't think it was that good. I I, I thought okay, oh another good name, whatever. I watched him. I watched him this week uh, on SmackDown. Like I was impressed, like in ring work and just the whole look and all that. Wow. He, I, I'll tell you what though, he could he would have been great in AEW too though. Oh yeah, so, I'm happy he's back in WWE. So though, Vince, I'm not the, lie. the fact that Vince is able to get to get him away from AEW that's that's a steal. Yeah. So John Morris is my MVP this week. I was really impressed. Great, Joe. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Drew McIntyre because I mean that man looked like a mil- well, he was in a uh, segment with two extremely over long term main eventers. And and looked like he more than belonged. I mean that that was that moment when you were just like, oh, 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 oh. oh. All right, my MVP of the week. Uh, this one normally normally you get the 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 funny ha-has from Joe, but Joe went something serious. So I am going to take the funny haha this week. My MVP is Otis for catching Mandy Rose. <laughs> yes. I love Otis. I have a soft spot in my heart for him. Well, I mean, you know. You He's know. fat. I'm fat. I get it. It's cool. He's like the white Big E. I like it. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, well, so, Big E's fucking jacked, though. We, we talked so about is Otis, this. just in a different way. <laughs> yeah, sure. in, the, in the belly. <laughs> get in my right. belly. And it, it's your boy, Shawn Michaels. There you go. So we talked about this on last week's episode. I said we would announce the official draft order for the Take 3 Wrestling Podcast draft, which is going to take place. We'll be filming it on uh, Saturday uh, as part of a podcast special edition slash also a live video where you'll see us in our war rooms and sitting at our tables trying to determine our actual rosters on my YouTube channel, which you can follow uh, currently at uh, Fat Kid Certified SE. Uh, yeah. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to hit random on this thing five times and where we stand is where we will draft on Saturday from Casa de Bernier. Come on. No whammy. One, two, three, four. Dead air. Final. (laughs) All right. With the third pick in the take three wrestling draft. It goes to Ernst. Fuck! (laughs) Get wrecked, bitch. Uh, Hold on, I gotta write this down so I don't lose it. Um, So there's only three of us. How hard is this? Wait. Uh, I'll forget. (laughs) I have I have a sick kid. I'm not gonna remember what I did five minutes from now. Yeah, that's true. Uh, With the with the second pick in the Take Three Wrestling Draft, that pick belongs to. And Joe. the first overall pick belongs to at the real Joseph Lopez. Woo! Uh, any any uh, spoiler on who you may think at number one? I'm going to try and see who wins the Heisman first, so we'll see. Yes. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like they'd be happier to sign with me than the Bengals, so. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa! No chance there, <laughs> Chief. Joe Burrow's about to win the about to win the hearts of uh, all of us in Cincinnati land. Mm-hmm. Um, again, rules for this draft. Just so you guys are again aware, I'll go over them again if we pick any more. We haven't done any other rules. Tag teams are drafted as a pair. The only trios that are eligibly drafted as a unit are the New Day and SCU. Uh, time clock. First 10 picks is 30 seconds. Second 10 picks is one minute. Uh, trades are allowed if wanted. Uh, and a free agent pool can be picked up from post-draft with a maximum move of three moves per person. Um, other than that, uh, that's the draft order. Now, I have a question. Okay. So, when we're like, if, if we're, you know, trading things, yep. does, does it have to only be wrestlers or like, can I trade you, like, Chad Gable for, like, the last piece of pizza when we're there? I'm willing and, and, and able, Chad, ready, willing, and Gable, to trade for anything. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean. I think I'm I have my number one pick out. now. Wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill, <laughs> chill. I'm not trading you. I'm not trading you my first overall pick for a slice of pizza. You can go fuck yourself. Uh, so. I sent you guys the PDF so you guys have those. Look those over if you want. I'm going to print out copies of them um, so we have to cross off while we're here um, so that we don't get overly confused on what the hell is going on. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, the only thing I have to say is, um, yeah, uh, Pox coming out on my TV. Another guy that, you know, WWE kind of missed on. Pac? Yeah, he's a bastard. Yeah, but they they, they, they probably wouldn't use him right anyway, so. He was great in NXT as the NXT champion, and then he went up to the main roster, and it's gone. What year was he in NXT? Let's see what year I'm watching. Hold on. Like 2015? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, wow. wow. Yeah, but I will, like, say, I will say, I will say that, wow, this is, okay. Uh, I'll just say real quick, though, like, his character development that's like the best thing that came out of his NXT run. Yes. And 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 really actually more of his 205 Live run, but, you know, he wouldn't be who he is now in AEW without that part. Like, the wrestling he would be there, but not the character. He'd still be a bastard. He's a Maybe. bust. Bastard. Uh, okay, this, this, this show, I think, has run its course. All right. <laughs> so, again, follow me on Twitter at EJChristian7. Follow the Take 3 po- Wrestling Podcast on Twitter at Take Number 3. Wrestling, uh, by Bernier, of course, at They Call Me Burn, uh, Joe Lopez on Twitter at. Yeah, right. <laughs> hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on. If you can actually find at, <laughs> Joe Lopez will get a real Twitter. Dude, make one up right now, Mike. <laughs> and uh, I can't. I don't know how to spell that. Oh, by the way, special shout out to Jim Corden for being, being an asshole. Oh, God, why? Why do you have to give him a shout-out? Because he's being an asshole. <laughs> That's oh, why. He's retarded. Kenny Olivier calls him Kenny Omega. It's annoying. I, so, I get it. Hey, 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 James. Hey, 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 James. You're you're making fun of people. You walked around carrying a tennis racket and probably don't know how to play tennis for the 25 years that you're in the business. And here, here's so the thing to be fair, also, well, like... I mean, I, I know, I know he's, he's he's one of the better wrestler, better uh, managers of all time, but he, he doesn't even stick my top three. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a bit overrated. Uh, who's, a, who's 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 the top guys he's, he's he's managed that? Okay, uh, outside, outside, you know, I'm talking about like. Not... You're, you're you're creating a whole new topic, buddy. You save that one for next week. Geez, no, next week's all. No, next week's going to be Next week's going to probably be all. Save that for three weeks from now. As, and we're, and we're Hogan, next week's all. Rumble. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put that in my uh, random topic thread so we have it. Top How many fucking threads do you have in your. You put this on a computer? Yeah, dude, I have a fucking Excel spreadsheet that I just have other tabs. What a nerd. I love it. <laughs> we got Someone's got to keep this organized. Nerd Someone's alert. Keep this or we're going to start talking about the same topics. Dude, I was I was brought up the, the five top five heels again thing. <laughs> I know you did. That's my point, <laughs> Jamook. <laughs> Fellas, it was great as always. Next week, don't forget Royal Rumble week. We have draft next Saturday, and then Royal Rumble review 
and Roy Rumble talk all next week on the on the Fifty Plus podcast for Joe, for Mike, um, EJ. You guys take care. Have a good night. I'm going to sleep now. Arigato, Mr. Roboto.